Good morning again from Sculpture by the Lakes and this is part two of the tour of the park. Um, today we're going to go a little bit further into the gardens, to closer to the house. Uh, yesterday I forgot to actually introduce myself. Uh, my name's Simon Gudgeon and I'm the sculptor um, and along with my wife Monique we run Sculpture by the Lakes. Um, so most of the sculptures in the park are by me, um, along with most of the metalwork actually, anything, all the gates, the fences, coffee trailer, uh, hanging seats, a lot of the things in the park I actually make. Um, so welcome to the tour and I hope you enjoy seeing a few more pieces, a few more sculptures, other parts of the garden and also get a little bit of insight into what this was like and how we've been progressing with it over the years. So as we leave um, Leaf Spirit, where we were yesterday, um, one of the questions I had was which type of leaf is um, the sculpture made up of. If you look very closely at it, you can see the shape of the leaves throughout the sculpture. And these were maple leaves, um, which made up the whole face. And then leaving the holes within, so actually the other foliage can come through and blend in with the surroundings. From there, we're then walking towards um, one of the little wooded areas, which we planted a few years ago. And there's also a glorious little, uh, I think it's a cherry tree. I'm not really the one to ask on gardens and plants, that's uh, my wife, but just the blossom this year is absolutely stunning. This whole area, um, just walk across here. When we first arrived, you could stand here and look towards the house, which is the view you're seeing now. And it was all flat mown grass. There wasn't a tree anywhere. And it was the same going all the way up towards the vegetable garden, apart from the uh, big horse chestnut you can see there. Every other tree here we've planted over the years. These silver birch trees are, I can't, again, I can't remember the variety, but they're very white, um, bright white bark, and they're absolutely stunning on mass. And again, we've planted some wildflowers in amongst them. You can see a few little cowslips. Another lovely tree with its, uh, this is a cherry tree. I know this one cherry tree, this beautiful blossom. I'm walking now towards the, uh, the wildlife pond. Again, you imagine it before, this was just flat mown grass. So one of the things we um, found when we first arrived here, because the lakes were fishing and we had a lot of fish in them, that the, the sort of newt's tadpoles didn't really stand a chance. All the frogs spawn and all the tadpoles used to get eaten very quickly. So we put in this little wildlife pond to try and help um, the, the newts and the toads have somewhere to breed away from the fish. And it's very successful. We get a lot of tadpoles in here. And there's a sculpture there as well of two diving otters. The pond isn't lined, we actually uh, we run a pipe from the lake, which then balances the water levels with this pond. Got these glorious, ah, beautiful. And this is, uh, this is one of my newly designed tree guards. Be a lot of these going up around the park and um, they're basically to discourage the roe deer from coming in and eating and thrashing the um, small trees we've got in which uh, we do occasionally get problems with that then here we've got uh, a lot of the soil when we dug out the wildlife pond we thought we'll actually make a piece of land art so we made this large raised area and then planted um, this box which we prune in a japanese style called karikomi which is all cloud pruning, so it's a beautiful shape. We'll walk up there. And at the top, we've 
got a sculpture of dancing cranes. In the background, you can hear our dogs. Uh, we do have six dogs, and um, we'll go and say hello to those in a moment. Um, I'm particularly fascinated by cranes when it comes to sculpture because they are such a wonderful shape um, and beautiful to abstract. So we can get this lovely abstract form. And this sculpture is also partly inspired by the Strelitzia, which is a South African flower, which is also known as the crane flower. And down below there, we've got this lovely long snaking grass bed, which is just starting to come um, to, to grow away. It's a lovely, lovely grass when it comes and in autumn, this wonderful seed pot heads. come and introduce you to all the dogs. Oh. You've, uh, you've met Luna before, the Spanish terrorist. And then we've got Beta the Black Cock Spaniel and Karma, Karma the Charmer, who's a, a rescue from Spain a lovely Pedenko, he's an old boy. And then Copper. And uh, somewhere in there, Mr. Wolf has just gone back inside. Mr. Wolf's a, a lazy lurcher and uh, doesn't like to move very much. And uh, again, he's another rescue dog that came here. This is one of the reasons we don't allow other dogs to come here because these, this is our dog's home. Some of them, well, three of them are rescues. They do have issues and this is their home, so I'm afraid we don't, don't let other dogs come here. That's it for today's little tour. Um, tomorrow we're gonna to go down through the Wise Walk, which is behind me, and we'll go and see more sculptures and more parts of the garden. And Monique has said she will come along tomorrow and talk about the plants in the Rose Garden as well. So have a lovely Easter Sunday, and we shall look forward to seeing you again tomorrow. Thank you.